a kind of collapse of the vision of a large, broad-based radical movement. Of course, there's still unions. Of course, there was the counter-globalization movement, the Zapatistas. A lot of very interesting and important things have happened. But that sense that there is this kind of movement with a particular kind of objective or set of objectives, however vaguely articulated they ever really were, that seems to have sort of dissipated. And the fact is that people feel that vacuum. And as we were saying a minute ago, there's a kind of lack of a fantasy or an image of an alternative that's broader than, say, the one that just fixes the housing problem or whatever you're involved with. So in that absence, what I see a lot of artist groups doing is actually creating, uh, you might say, occupying the space in which those mass movements once did occupy. So to give an example, you might have one or two or four people who will call themselves, you know, this institute or that army or this brigade or this movement. And I could give you some specific examples like the rebel clown army, for example, or the biotic baking brigade. They take on these kind of very large institutional sort of sounding structures, but in fact they're relatively small, and they're certainly not mass movements in the way they existed in the 1960s and the 1970s. I'm also thinking of an Austrian group, the Public Theater Caravan. Do you probably know them? I know of them through uh, uh, the work of um, our friend Gerald, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think they fit exactly in that model that you described before. Mm -hmm. The polis thought this group is larger than it was. So because they are, because of the very sort of um, referencing of something larger than they really were, they sort of ended up maybe getting trapped by their own rhetoric in a way, um, which is very interesting because to something to the same extent happened with Steve Kurtz. Steve Kurtz, who was a founder of the Critical Art Ensemble, woke to find his wife had died, turns out as a, of a heart attack, 2004, in May, the FBI arrived because when people came to his house, which was his art studio, they found various scientific equipment for extracting DNA and bacterial samples, all of which were part of an exhibition Critical Art Ensemble was working on. Right after Steve Kurtz was being investigated by the FBI, just in those first few weeks, FBI agents went to his boss, who would be basically the chair of his art department at the University of Buffalo. And among the questions asked was, why does this group call itself a collective? And it was clearly phrased in such a way, as you were suggesting before, to suggest that they were something ominous and much larger and perhaps networked about this than just a group of artists who call themselves critical art ensemble. And I think you're absolutely right. That on the one hand, many of us involved in these kind of self-institutional collectives choose these, these names which are a bit aggrandizing in a way, or like I said before, they're, they're a bit of mimicry that holds a mirror up to the system in a way so that you can kind of hide behind it. At the same time, that can get you into, into tr problems you know, when the system's actually sort of looking, what is this about? Uh, you're doing exactly the kind of interference that they expect from Al-Qaeda or some other kind of organization, or that's what they think, at least let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh -huh. The New Museum is an interesting institution, you know, it was started in the 70s by Marsha Tucker after she was fired from the Whitney and she sort of said, well, fuck you, I'm going to start my own museum. And she went and she created a museum that for a while was located on 14th Street near the new school and then was located in Soho on Broadway. And now it's here on the Lower East Side. But this is an interesting stop in between the Musty Foundation and ABC No Rio. Musty being this really old-fashioned not-for-profit that houses various cultural and activist groups. No Rio being really something that started as a squat action in 1979 and then grew into an institution. And here, an institution had started really within the art world but as an alternative space to the art world and 
has now become a bona fide museum. The Musty Foundation, where PAD was located in repo history, is probably the closest to representing what we were talking about before, this kind of idea of a missing cultural mass or a kind of dark matter of uh, the sort of cultural sphere. Uh, dark matter is, in astrophysics is just an unknown energy and mass that nobody knows what it is except it seems to be the majority of the universe and therefore is holding together with its gravity the forces of the universe. Of course, once scientists find out what dark matter is, it won't be dark matter anymore. It'll actually have a name. It'll be something. Generally speaking, the art world has done its best to ignore its dark matter. No one's really looking for it. If you look at the art world as a kind of enclosed economy, a discrete economy, then a huge portion of it is unwaged. And that includes most artists who graduate with professional degrees who never really remunerate anything from the work that they do, from the degrees that they've earned from the profession. They remain, in a sense, part of the dark matter of the art world. If you took that away, if you didn't have that, the economy would collapse. What's interesting to me are those fewer number of artists who actually sort of choose to identify, you might say, with this redundant and invisible part of the art world by actually self-institutionalizing and becoming part of a collective. In a sense saying, you know, damn it, I will have an identity, I'll stamp an identity on myself, I'll create my own identity with other people, and it really is, you know, an act of defiance. Most interesting are those who really politically, consciously understand to some degree the way that they participate in this economy and actually try to refuse, uh, refuse it or at least oppose it or make it visible in some way. And I think that's really where my own research interests have taken me.